your heart mateys welcome to the seas this is damn wrong we're playing the sunken kingdom update in season four part of sea of thieves this brought a whole bunch of new commendations new voyages new shrines a lot of new stuff and in this video we're covering the new legend of the sunken kingdom voyage which is available to buy from Lorena, but only after you have found all the secrets in the six different shrines that are scattered throughout the Sea of Thieves. So I covered those shrines in different videos and where to find those journals, but once you get all 30, then you can actually purchase this quest from Lorena. So again, you have to get all 30 of the journals before this will be available to you. I'll have all of those shrines linked in the description and in the comments so you can click those no, to be I'm sure you get your journals. Once you have all 30 and you go to Lorena stock, you will find a new quest available, the Legend of the Sunken Kingdom for 50 doubloons. So let's go ahead and purchase Come that. And now we're gonna be grub. able to go on our adventure of the Legend of the Sunken Kingdom. So we're gonna put that on our quest table, go ahead and vote on that so this is kind of the quote last part of the sunken kingdom kind of story and by completing this you're going to get the curse of the sunken sorrow so that's what we're aiming for we're aiming to get the final foundations and get that new curse so once you place that voyage down you're going to get a new golden wayfarer compass placed in your quest wheel and this is similar well not similar exactly the same as the compass that you get in the vaults of the ancient quests where you're going to get you know the gold hoarder vaults so basically this compass is going to lead you in the direction that you go you're also going to get a note from Humphrey saying he's buried a chest and the compass will lead the way so this could lead you to multiple different islands depending on where you start the quest it's usually pretty close by so I recommend starting in the wilds because the first shrine that we have to go to is in the wilds. so if you start this quest start it in the wilds that way the first areas you're going to visit will We'll kind of already be where we need to go next anyway just follow that compass again it can lead you to multiple different islands and eventually it's going to lead you to an island that it's going to get a little herky-jerky and then you're going to follow it and it's going to start spinning around in circles that's going to let you know that that's the area that you need to dig also when you dig it up be aware that some ocean crawlers are going to spawn so you're going to need to take them out before you can finish digging up the forbidden coral chest which is a pretty cool chest um, so once you have that chest in hand let's go ahead and head back to our boat and what you'll notice is it says it needs three keys to unlock this so we're gonna have to have this chest for the remainder of this voyage so make sure you keep it do not lose it you're also going to get another note from Humphrey saying that he hid a scholar scroll and now the compass is going to lead you to that. So similarly, we're going to, you know, follow our golden wayfarer compass to the island that it leads you to. Again, it's not cardinal directions. It's just going to kind of point where you have to go. You know, similar to Jack Sparrow's compass. It's going to lead you to your heart's desire. So anyway, this one took me to Crooked Mass. And again, you're going to follow that compass until it spins around in circles. And now when you dig this up, you're going to find scholar's notes. Be aware, more ocean crawlers are going to appear to have fun in that area so once you've dug that up and you head back to the boat you're going to have two new notes in your quest radio wheel one telling you like leave the keys don't open it obviously we're not going to listen to that the second one is a note that's going to tell you to seek the shrine of hungering so again this is why i told you you should probably start this quest in the wilds because the hungering shrine is the first static place that we're going to venture to in this voyage. So it tells you to go there and to find a coin and the way that you're gonna find that coin is basically some trail of riches that are gonna lead the way. So we need to head up to the shrine of hungering which is in the northeast portion of the map at Q5, kind of east of Sharkfin camp. So go ahead and head up there. And as always now it's on the map. We've gone over all of these shrines in previous videos but just a reminder it's on the map but it's also gonna be indicated by this blue light that's kind of coming out out of the water and that's going to let you know where you need to dive and basically go straight down now the shrine of hungering i'll just mention remember that the entrance to this isn't actually the in the middle of that coral structure you need to head to the northern side all the way on the sea bottom and when you get all the way down there you'll see these kind of rib bones sticking out of the ground okay and if you look north from that is that small cave entrance that's going to go into the shrine now i'm not going to cover all of the puzzles and shrine details in this video obviously you had to do that to get all of the journals so you should be familiar with it but again I'll link that down in the comments if you need a refresher nonetheless in here you need to progress to the top of the shrine where you normally would go through that shark's mouth to go to the final section and if you look just south from that shrine you're gonna see a door that has a similar symbol on it that's kind of this you know rock like structure that looks like a door leading away from that is going to be a trail of gold so if you follow that trail of gold it's gonna take you kind of back down 
down a little bit down this broken mass that we originally had ascended and then across the kraken spine that we had walked up as well and when you get here if you look across the way you should see the glimmer of the gold hoarder medallion that we need to get sitting up on that kraken spine or a megalodon spine i don't know but anyway once we go up there go ahead and grab that gold hoarder's medallion and now we that we have this in hand we can head back up to that door that we saw that's at the top of the shrine and place this just to the right of the door and this is going to unlock this and we can get our first forbidden key Now, one thing to take note about these forbidden keys is that you're not going to be able to give these to the merfolk statues. You're not going to be able to put, you know, put them in a chest to then give to the merfolk statues. So you are going to have to actually swim this back up to your boat. So the shrines that have these forbidden keys will always have an exit in the last room, as you saw there. Um, so you're going to have to physically swim this back up to your boat. So just keep that in mind. You know, you don't have to try to figure out a way to give it to the merfolk statue. You can't do that. But once you get back up to your boat now you're going to go ahead and place this key into the chest there's no need to keep it separate it's not going to unlock until we get all three different keys but it's better just go ahead and put that one in there so we don't have to worry about you know losing it after picking up that forbidden key, we're also going to get a new note that says to seek the Shrine of Ocean's Fortune. And this is a pretty far distance away. And this is what kind of makes this voyage a little bit longer because you have to sail great distances. We're going to go all the way to D14 to the Shrine of Ocean's Fortune. And similar to the previous you know, shrine, we're here to get a new forbidden key. So dive down there as we have done again. I'm not going to cover this shrine in detail. I will link it right here as well as in the comments in the description. So if you need a refresher on ocean's fortune you can you know do that but the entrance again is on the north side you're going to swim under this door and kind of go into this large shrine and it's just kind of a platforming shrine but you need to make your way all the way to the final room where we use the captain's wheels to turn the mass and progress around this room when you get to the third captain's wheel okay which is right here where we have to turn this platform and basically jump on it to jump over to the fourth captain's wheel but before we jump over if if you look to your left and go across the mast, we can actually jump on the back of this ship hull. And again, you'll see some gold hoarder coin right there. Use that to jump across to this coral hanging off the wall for our next gold hoarder's medallion. Once we found that, go back across the map, and now we can progress the way that we normally progress in the shrine. Go to the fourth captain's wheel, and now you have to place this, you know, again, the way that you're supposed to in order to be able to progress. But once we've got this to where we can walk over the mast, we're going to turn right here into this broken hall, and we're going to progress all the way to the very top of the shrine in this crow's nest. We can use this crow nest to hop to the other side, where you're going to find the entrance to our second forbidden key. All right, so just like our first key, now we have this and we have a new scholar's riddle. But again, you're gonna have to swim this one back up to your boat, but there will be an exit right at the top of the shrine for you to go through. So go ahead and exit and swim all the way back up to our boat with the key in hand. It's kind of a slow swim because we're you know slowed down by this really heavy key. But eventually you get back to your boat, place the second key into your chest, and now we're gonna have our third and final location to seek, which is the Shrine of Ancient Tears. Here it says there's a sealed door, and to you know beat this, we need to cast our gaze upon the floor. So we need to head all the way over there, which is pretty far east and a little bit south of where we were, kind of east of Thieves' Haven at N20. So this is the Shrine of Ancient Tears. So the difference here is now we're gonna take our chest down with us, okay? So be sure you have your chest chest in your hand and you have placed the first two keys in it this is really going to minimize the time that we would have to go back and forth if you leave your chest up on your boat okay so have your chest in hand and we're going to swim down to the bottom of the ancient tiers again the entrance is where this kind of shipwreck is at the bottom of the at the bottom of the sea here so once we get down there we can now in you know enter the shrine and lucky for us the you know things that we need to do for the end of this voyage are actually right in the beginning of this shrine area so go ahead and walk in with our chest and you'll remember this area it's got this nice you know well-like structure right in the middle and we're going to drop down there you're going to see this 
this altar right here okay so that's going to be important later but let's go ahead and place our chest there if you look to the northeast you'll see a sealed door and if you look to the south you're going to see the gold hoarder medallion door so we look at that and it says we need to step on the floor switches right so here's the gold hoarder medallion you can follow the you know coins around but essentially what we're doing is similar to what we did when we did the shrine itself is we're going to walk around the periphery of this room and step on all four of the switches that are on the floor and you have to do this in a relative relatively quickly time it's not like super fast you know but you have plenty of time to step on them all but as long as you do it relatively quickly then the door on the second level of this walkway at the east side is going to open and again you can see this trail of gold which will only be here if you're on this voyage but it's going to lead you to our next gold hoarders medallion that we can place in the door and get our final forbidden key With the third final forbidden key in hand, let's go ahead and place that in our chest. It's gonna open up for us and we're gonna get this really beautiful, cool looking, mysterious, ancient key. And if you notice, the altar that we're standing on conveniently has a outline of something that looks like this key will fit nice into it. So go ahead and put that mysterious ancient key in that opening and the door on the northeast side of that room will open and you will be opened into the final room of this voyage with a book the war below the waves and this is pretty cool you should definitely read it i'm not going to ruin it for you but you definitely actually you have to read through the whole thing in order to finish the quest when you get to the end of it the voyage will complete and now we have finished the legend of the sunken kingdom and also will unlock the curse of sunken sorrow which is pretty cool um so also keep in mind you will probably as you're reading through that most likely that door behind you um, will close but that's okay there is a switch in here that you can hit to unlock it it's you know if you're looking at the door look to the left because it's kind of dark so don't think you're like locked in here and you can't get out there is a switch that will open up that door so once you've done that we've completed it you'll have the curse and we're progressing on to getting all the commendations done in the sunken kingdom section of our build rat journal i hope you guys enjoyed it and hopefully i'll see you on the seas